guys so today we're going to talk about the genesis of the resting membrane potential this is a very important concept uh, and it is very important to understand transmission of impulse in neurons as well as contraction of the muscles so without wasting any time uh, my name is kaushik chari i'm currently pursuing my mbbs from aims and uh, you can follow me on an academy using this link so the excitable tissues in your body are the neurons and the muscles what makes them excitable is this resting membrane potential so what do you mean by excitable is that the neurons can fire and the muscles can contract so uh, basically they maintain a resting membrane potential so what this resting membrane potential is is that at rest at rest the membranes of the neurons and the muscle cells are polarized that means that the potential difference that exists between the inner side of the membrane and outer side of the membrane is called the resting membrane potential so what do you mean by polarization is basically that there is a difference in the potential difference between difference in the potential in between the inner side and the outer side of the membrane so that's what we might mean by polarization i repeat myself the potential difference that exists between the inner and outer side of the membrane is the resting membrane potential and polarization means the existence of this difference in potential between the two membranes so that means the membrane is more positive on one side and more negative on the other that's the reason for existing of potential difference and on stimulation they get depolarized so what this means we will see in the coming slides so basically we have the ions that are involved in generation of the resting membrane potential the sodium and it is uh, now in the coming slides i'm going to explain the factors that are involved in the generation of the resting membrane potential and finally i'll put it all together and show you how actually the resting membrane potential is generated so you should remember the three main uh, ions that are required one is the sodium ion whose concentration is much much greater in the extracellular fluid as compared to the intracellular fluid and the potassium ion whose concentration is much much more in the intracellular fluid as compared to the extracellular fluid main anion a main anion of the extracellular fluid is the chloride anion and the main anion of the intracellular fluid is the protein anion so these are the three main four main ions that you should remember moving on the channels that are involved what are channels channels are actually proteins that are present in the membrane which allow permeable which, which are permeable only to a particular ion so basically we have the sodium potassium and the na plus k plus atpas what these are i will explain you through diagrams so this is a sodium channel and i have shown the sodium channel in three phases so basically a sodium channel consists of an activation gate and an inactivation gate and at rest at rest the activation gate is closed and the inactivation activation gate is closed and the inactivation gate is open so this is the sodium channel at rest now when you apply a stimulus the sodium channel the activation gate opens and the inactivation gate is already open so you have a conduit for passage of the sodium ions and now when the sodium channel is inactivated the inactivation gate closed and the activation gate is open so it is very important to remember that the three phases of the sodium channel one is at rest one is when it's active or stimulated or depolarized and one when it is inactivated and so what is the importance of these three phases i will tell you in the transmission of nerve impulse that is my next lesson actually so for now it is important to remember that the three phases of the sodium channel and the sodium channel has an inactivation gate and an inactivation gate and at rest the activation gate is closed and the inactivation gate is open so the potassium channel is pretty much simple compared to the sodium there is a single gate which is closed or open at rest it is closed and when it is active the activation gate is open and potassium from inside moves outside so an interesting channel is the na plus k plus atp is which transmits three sodium out of the cell so this direction is out of the cell and two potassium inside the cell so it pushes out three sodium out and one potassium in and it uses the atp as its energy source for doing it so we call it the na plus k plus atp a so this is a channel which pushes three sodium outside and gets in two potassium and it uses atp as its energy source so the membrane the membrane is a selectively permeable membrane which is permeable only to potassium and not at all almost nil to sod uh, sodium 
and it's impermeable to the protein and ions. So what is what do you mean by selective permeability is that irrespective of these channels, don't confuse these channels, irrespective of the presence or absence of these channels, the membrane in general is more permeable to potassium. There's some non-specific uh, channels in the membrane which are permeable to potassium but not to sodium even at rest so the selectively permeable membrane means that the pot membrane is permeable to potassium but not at all to sodium irrespective of these channels please con don't confuse the with these channels you may say that the potassium channel is closed at rest so how is it permeable to potassium this is not based only on these channels there are certain non-specific channels in the membrane which are permeable to potassium but not at all or very little to sodium and impermeable to the protein anions so put let's put it all together so we have a membrane here this is inside of the cell this is outside of the cell we have the na plus k plus atps over here and we have a more predominant sodium outside and a, a more predominant potassium inside so the main tendency of potassium is to move out and the general tendency of sodium is to move in but this is blocked by the membrane because remember the membrane is not permeable to sodium so sodium cannot move in but potassium does move out so potassium keeps moving out of the membrane and gets acu gets accumulated in the extracellular fluid but remember once potassium moves outside from inside then it leaves a residual negative charge on the inside of the membrane right because the potassium is a positively charged ion and when it moves from outside inside to outside it'll leave a charge a negative charge over here so as potassium leaks out of this membrane it starts to uh, the membrane on the inside starts to develop a negative charge a negative charge on the inside and the potassium keeps moving out and as the concentration of potassium increases on the outside and the concentration of potassium increases on the outside so there's a tendency for potassium to move in as well because the membrane is freely permeable to potassium so there's a tendency of potassium to move in as well both because this is a negative charge here and potassium is a positively charged ion so it has a tendency to move in because it is attracted to the negative charge so at one point of time there's a fine balance that is struck between the concentration gradient that exists between the inside and outside of the cell because of which the potassium is moving out and the because of the electrochemical electrical gradient because of which potassium wants to move in so please understand me here that we have potassium more on the inside and as the potassium moves outside it gets a negative charge on the inside so the concentration of potassium uh, gradient concentration gradient of potassium is asking you to move out of the cell but as potassium starts accumulating outside the cell and a negative charge start developing inside the potassium has also a tendency to move in because of its electrical gradient so this is fine balance that is struck between these two the concentration gradient of potassium and the electrical gradient of potassium because of which there is a negative charge on the inside and a relatively positive charge on the outside and the membrane becomes polarized so now you may ask me what is the role of these protein anions if the protein anions had moved out along with the potassium it would have neutralized the negative charge on the inside but because it is membrane is not permeable to protein anions that is why you get a resting membrane potential and a polarized membrane so what is the function of the na plus k plus atps it it also augments this uh, polarization see it pushes out three sodium and gets into potassium so basically it's sending out more positive and getting less positive inside so it develops a negative charge on the inside so overall because of these factors because of these factors i repeat myself that there is a fine balance struck between the concentration gradient of the potassium and the electrical gradient of the potassium which is driving in the concentration gradient of the potassium is driving it out there is electric electrical gradient of the potassium is driving it in and both of them strike a fine balance with the membrane being negative on the inside and slightly positive on the outside and the na plus k plus atpa is just augments this resting membrane potential so if you get a question saying the most important ion generation of the resting membrane potential it is potassium and the channel that is important in the channel that uses energy is the na plus k plus atpas which sends out three sodium and gets into potassium remember sends out three gets into you will never forget this if you remember that the membrane is negatively charged on the inside so you get confusing mcq saying three sodium inside two sodium outside something like that but if you remember that the three sodium going out and two coming in because the membrane is negatively charged so you will never forget this 
so if you see in the end a resting membrane potential of this sort develops where you have a negative charge on the inside a positive charge in the outside and this is the um, uh, voltmeter which is measuring measuring the potential difference as you can see it's minus 70 so that's it for this lesson and thank you for watching